Hi guys. Uh, I was thinking about the muscles. Here we have some muscles. When they are contracting, they can do flexion of the uh, fingers of the hand and flexion of the wrist. And they can also do pronation. When I'm talking about the pronation, it means that the palm faces down. This is the supination, this is the pronation. So which muscles can do these two uh, movements? Pronation and flexion of the wrist and digits. The muscles that are on the anterior compartment of the forearm, they are called anterior uh, forearm muscles. They, when they contract, they can do flexion of the wrist and digits, and they can also do pronation. So flexors and pronators are here, anterior forearm muscles. So today I'm going to show you uh, the bones and the muscles around the forearm. So this uh, skeleton. Here, my friend is here to show you the bones, the forearm bones. So forearm, we have two bones. Laterally, we have the uh, radius. Medially, you can see the ulna. So the proximal ends of the radius and ulna, they contribute to forming the uh, elbow joint with uh, the distal end of the, um, this bone, the humerus. And then you can see here how the distal end of the radius, only radius, contribute to forming the uh, wrist joint with uh, the proximal row bones of the uh, carpal bones. Here's the carpal, metacarpal, and the phalanges. So the name is the radiocarpal joint, and the other name is the wrist joint. So the distal end of the ulna does not contribute to forming the wrist joint. Then we have intercarpal joints, mid-carpal joints here, carpal, metacarpal, this is the carpal bones, here is the metacarpal, we have carpal, metacarpal joints, metacarpal phalangeal and interphalangeal joints here. So these knuckles are my uh, metacarpal phalangeal between the metacarp and proximal phalanx, and these are the proximal and distal interphalangeal, pip and dip proximal distal interphalangeal joints. So now I can show you the anterior compartment of the, um, the forearm. So this is the anterior compartment of the forearm. We have different muscles in different layers. So it's a little bit challenging for students to remember all these muscles. But just keep in mind, as they are flexors, and pronators, they have uh, the word flexor and or pronator in their name. No extensor, no supinator. So we have, most of them are flexor. We have the word flexor. We have flexor carpi radialis, flexor carpi ulnaris, etc. Or pronator, pronator teres, pronator quadratus. So all flexor and pronator muscles are in the anterior compartment of the forearm and we have different layers. I'm going to try to simplify for you guys to, uh, to help you to remember all those muscles and appreciate the, uh, the functions or actions of the muscles. So here we have the medial epicondyle at the bone. You can see the uh, medial epicondyle. Here is the medial epicondyle of funny bone of the humerus, the end of humerus, this is a lateral epicondyle. So medial epicondyle makes a common attachment site for the first or superficial layers of muscles. If you look at here, we have uh, different muscles, one, two, three, four muscles coming from the medial epicondyle. So it's, it provides a, a common attachment site for the superficial layer, four muscles. So if you put your palm on the medial epicondyle, your four fingers except uh, thumb, uh, they show you the direction of the four muscles. So my index finger shows the first muscle, it's the pronator teres, and my uh, middle finger shows the, uh, this muscle. It is called flexor carpi radialis, and my ring finger shows the uh, palmaris longus and little finger shows this muscle it is called flexor carpi ulnaris so we have four muscles here the mnemonic is pass fail pass fail pass is starts with p pronator teres is starts with p pass pronator teres fail 
flexicop radialis. Second pass, palmaris longus. Second phase is flexicarpi ulnaris. So pronator teres starts from the common attachment side, medial epicondyle, and stops here. As you see, it attaches to the midpoint of the shaft of the radius. When it contracts, as its name tells us, it can do pronation. So if you look at here, imagine that this is my pronator teres. It's coming from the medial epicondyle, attached to the midpoint of the uh, shaft of the radius. When it contracts, it can do pronation. So it can also do flexion because it crosses the uh, elbow joint anteriorly. So it can help the uh, elbow flexors like biceps, brachialis. Please watch my uh, last video about the arm muscles. So biceps, brachialis, they are um, crossing the elbow joint anteriorly. So pronator tear is also crossing the elbow joint anteriorly. So it can also do flexion of the elbow. The second muscle is the flexor carpi radialis. Flexor, because it can do flexion. Carpi means wrist. It's a Latin word, means wrist, because it crosses the wrist joint and it attaches to the uh, base of the second and third metacarpal bone. So this is the second. This one is the third. So it attaches to the base of the second and third metacarpal bone. So it does not go further down. So it does not flex the digits, only crosses the wrist joint and intercarpal and metacarpal flangeal joints. So it can do flexion of the wrist. It's on the radial side, that's why it is called flexor carpi radialis. The third muscle is palmaris longus. So it's coming from the common attachment side, medial epicondyle, has a long, uh, narrow tendon. It does not attach to the bone. It attaches to the palmar aponeurosis. So palmar aponeurosis is the thickening of the deep fascia in your palm. That's why it's called palmaris longus, has a long tendon, ends up attaching to the palmar aponeurosis. And as it crosses the wrist joint, it can also do flexion of the wrist and it makes some lines in your palm to grab the object when you are carrying the object. And finally, last but not least, we have the flexor carpi ulnaris. Again, it's coming from the common attachment side, medial epicondyle, and the tendon attaches to the PZ form. It's uh, a, one of the uh, proximal row carpal bones, and then it continues down and attaches to the hamate and the base of the fifth metatarsal. I can show you on the um, skeleton, so it's coming from here, medial epicondyle goes down and attached to the PZ form, this bone, and from PZ form it goes down to the hamate, hook of hamate, piezo hamate ligament, and then it goes down and attaches here as well, to the base of the fifth metatarsal. So at it, as it crosses the, um, the wrist joint, it can do flexion of the wrist, and it does not go further down, like flexor radialis and flexor ulnaris, both of them working together to do flexion of the wrist. They can also do radial deviation, ulnar deviation. So in the anatomical position, it's called the radial deviation. Your wrist moving away and moving towards the radius, it's called radial deviation or abduction, abduction or ulnar deviation or adduction. So flexor carpi ulnaris is on the ulnar side, it can do ulnar deviation. Flexor carpi radialis can do radial deviation. So when they are, yeah, contracting uh, independently, yeah, they can do flexion, radial deviation for carpi radialis, flexion, ulnar deviation for carpi ulnaris. Uh, yeah, this is the superficial layer. Then deep to the superficial layer, we have intermediate layer. I'm gonna uh, take it off the proximal the superficial layer. You can see this wide muscle here. It goes further down and it splits into four tendons to the digits. So it can flex the digits. So its name is flexor digitorum superficialis. So as it's really wide, 
it attaches to the common attachment side, media lepicondyle. It also attaches to the uh, radius and ulna. So you can see it goes down and it splits into four tendons. Here we have four tendons, which goes down and attaches to the medial flanges of the um, four uh, medial digits, except thumb. So you can see the tendon splits into two bands and it cover, it attaches to either side of the middle flank, phalanx. So when it contracts, as its name tells us, it can flex the digit. As it crosses the uh, knee joint as well, it can also flex the knee joint as well, and metacarpal phalangeal, interphalangeal, all uh, joints, except the dip dorsal. Uh, distal interphalangeal because it, have, it ends up the medial phalanx here. As it ends up the medial phalanx, it does not go further down. So it does not cross the distal, distal interphalangeal. So all joints are flexed except dip. Then dip to the, this one. I'm going to take it off. We have the third layer. Just deep to the flexor digitorum superficialis, we have flexor digitorum profundus. The word profundus means deep. Flexor digitorum profundus does not attach to the humerus. It's shorter than the flexor digitorum superficialis. It attaches to the radius and ulna. So it goes down and it splits into four tendons. You can see the tendons, well, some of the tendons here, if you look at closely. It passes just... Uh, below the, uh, the flexor or deep to the flexor digitorum superficialis tendon, passing underneath this bridge, this is formed by the superficialis, and attached to the distal phalanx. So flexor digitorum superficialis attached to the proximal, whereas the deep one, profundus, attached to distal phalanx. So it crosses also the uh, deep, this, this joint, distal interphalangeal. So it can flex the wrist, flex the metacarpal phalangeal, this joint, knuckles, flex the proximal interphalangeal, and also distal interphalangeal. So the big differences between the profoundus and the superficialis is that. So if you want to test the uh, deep muscle, flex the digitorum profundus, you can keep the middle phalanges, phalanx, and flex the distal one. This is the test for the flexor digital profundus. At the same level, on the thumb side, we have another muscle. It has the word pollicis. Pollicis means thumb. It's flexing the thumb. So it's called flexor pollicis longus. So it attaches to the radius and it goes down and you can see the tendon here. This white color is the tendon attached to the distal phalanx of the thumb, as its name suggests. When it can try, can do flexion of the thumb. Flexor, pollicis, longus. And the deepest muscle, we have only one muscle. You can't see because it's deep. I see a little bit here. We have a quadrangular shaped muscle here. It's called the pronator quadratus. It's uh, connecting the distal end of the radius to the ulna. When it contracts, it can pull the radius over the ulna and make the pronation, as its name tells us. So it helps the pronator uh, teres. The main action is pronator. The prime mover is for the pronation is the pronator quadratus. So pronator teres helps the pronator quadratus. So we have four layers of muscles. As a quick wrap, wrap, wrap up, the superficial layer, I showed you four muscles here. Pronator teres, this one. Flexor carpal radialis, palmaris longus, flexor carpi ulnaris. And the intermediate layer is this muscle, flexor digitorum superficialis. Deep to this, we have the flexor digitorum profundus. And on the medial side, thumb side, sorry, on the lateral side or thumb side, we have flexor, pollicis longus. And the deepest layer is the 
only muscle we have in the deepest layer, pronator quadratus. So these are the muscles of the anterior forearm. Next video, I'm going to focus on the posterior forearm, the extensor and supinator muscle. Thank you so much for your attention.